someone stacks them up, what we call ihtikar. Al ihtik al muhtakiru mal'unu. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the one who holds and gathers, and he knows now everybody's in difficulty, there's no sugar, and you've been for the past three years, you know what's happening, you've stored all the sugar, and then I say, you're the only one who has tomatoes or, or potatoes or sugar. That's it. Nobody else in the community has sugar. And that's it. You make the prices go extortionate. You make, and you just create a monopoly. You're the boss. You're in charge. And you're harming people. That is actually unlawful and sinful. He said, al muhtakiru mal'un. And there are many other things. But one last final thing, which is a very important qa'ida principle. And that relates to our normal day-to-day -day transactions. Sorry, I'm going above time. But this is a very important lecture. And I'm seeing... MashaAllah, people are quite, you know, uh, glued. So that's why I carried on. But this is a definite last point. There's a saying, and this is a qa'idah. This is a qa'idah. This is a principle in Arabic. It's a saying of one of the early scholars, or maybe one of the imams, tabi'een. Some said it's a hadith, but to, as is hadith soundly established, it's not found. But nevertheless, the meaning is true. It's probably a, a tabi'i or someone said this. But it's generally a qa'idah. Ta'ashalu kal ikhwani wa ta'amalu kal ajalib. Ta'ashalu kal ikhwan wa ta'amalu kal ajalib. Live, remain, be like brothers and sisters. Have brotherhood, have sisterhood, have love for one another. But transact like strangers. Transact like strangers. Be very clear cut. Very clear cut. Determine ownership, even in the family. When you take a loan from someone, write it down. That's in the Quran. How much loan has been taken? By whom? From whom? When will it be paid back? When will it be given back? And determine ownership in the house, in the business. You have a family business. You have a dad, father, who's a boss of the business. You have three sons, okay? They've been university, they've come back home. Join the business. And then sometimes we tell them, look, you know, you need to make, ensure clear cut, make your dealings clear cut, to transact. <coughs> Even if you're brothers and sisters, father and son, transact like stranger. Don't think it's your father now, after the business is done. When it's time for money, be very open, frank, everything clear cut. We don't do that, you know, we, I've told, I have experience when I've told people sometimes that look, you know, you need to, this is a family business, what capacity, the father started the business, the first son graduated from the university, he joins the business, the next son joins the business, the third son joins the business, in what capacity? Is, is he employed by the father? If he is, where are his wages? Or is he a partner in the business? Does he have a share? What share? Percentage? Or is he just voluntarily just helping the father? Make it clear, write it down. Everything should be clear because if you don't do that, in the beginning, no problems. It's father, brothers, you know. Can you talk about these things, you know, brothers and fathers? Okay, can you talk about these things? Then what happens? The father passes away. And then these three, I have seen cases, seriously, brothers and sisters, I have seen cases where blood brothers have become lifelong enemies to the point that one was close to killing and murdering the other for the sake of business because the father did not make things clear. Nothing was made clear. No, it's mine. I put more money in it. No, but I put more money in it. I, I worked more diligently for the business. You came two years after me. Oh, wait, when you got married, you took so much money from the business. All these problems occur. Why don't you make it simple, clear cut? It'll solve all the problems. From the beginning, day one, who owns what? How much percentage? How much share? If you build a house collectively, you have a house, the eldest son has also some input. When you're putting the money, what, you know, what capacity? You have to ensure your father's building a house, a property, and your son is giving you know, 40,000 whatever pounds, dollars. Is that a loan or is that a share, percentage? If it's a loan, then you only have to give. If it's inheritance, when the father dies, then whatever the property price is from the father's money, only 40,000 exactly will be given. But if it's a share, if you're owning 20%, then that money will increase by the inflation. If the house prices rise, then your 40,000 will rise as well. So make it clear.
You're giving them money as a loan or as a share, as, as a percentage in the business. So this is a very important rule. And then generally, it's very important for Muslims to be just hospitable. You know the way we do this is, a, this is definitely the prime final point. Uh, this, is, this is a light point. This is a light point. This is, it's, not a, it's not a rule. It's just a light point. Yeah, this is, this is a light point. Just generally, Muslims, the way they do business, business ethics. You should have a course on Islamic business ethics. Which doesn't mean that you always, I mean, people smile. You know, nowadays people, it's all artificial. You know, you go to the workplace, there's sweets there, you know, people stand there for you. It's all artificial. You, you know, if, if some major company representative comes, you know, you, you give them attention. That's all artificial. Islam doesn't agree to that. I mean, what Islam is saying, genuinely, business ethics. Be hospitable, smile at people, be gentle. If someone, Allah says, when can a and a If someone took a loan from you, he's genuinely in difficulty. You know that his brother is, he is difficult, he can't pay you off. Give him respite, give him time. Brother, don't worry, inshallah. Try your best. You know, try to help him out. You know, be gentle in your business. And there's a hadith about that. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa in the Sahih of Al-Bukhari, he said, and I'll end with this hadith. He said, رَحِمَ اللَّهُ إِمْرَأً سَمْحًا إِذَا بَاعَ سَمْحًا إِذَا اشْتَرَ سَمْحًا إِذَا اقْتَضَ Amazing hadith. Allah's mercy is on a man or a woman who is what? سَمْحًا إِذَا بَاعَ Who is polite, who is gentle, who is not rough and aggressive. You know what I mean by aggressive? You need to pay, you know, no. Who is gentle when he buys. سَمْحًا إِذَا اشْتَرَ he is gentle, polite when he sells, when he buys, when he sells. And samhan إِذَا اقْتَضَى He is gentle when he demands his right, in a nice way. But not artificially, it's not just externally. From the heart, he is gentle, he is polite in his dealings, inshallah. These were some of the things I thought I'd mention. If you have any questions, we can deal with them, inshallah, after the break.